video was originally recorded May 2018 at Tibet House US in New York City. To watch more videos from this program, please visit TibetHouse.us. Uh, I had a conversation with my own father um, in the uh, weeks before he died, uh, about 10 years ago now. Um, my father was a um, scientist, uh, what we would call, what Bob would call a scientific materialist, uh, professor of medicine, first at Yale and then at Harvard, um, who, with whom I never talked about anything spiritual. Um, he, uh, when I was first starting out and he got a sense of what I was interested in, he was, he was like, oh, there's a guy working for me. Maybe you could go uh, uh, get a summer job with him. He's kind of interested in this stuff. And it was uh, Herbert Benson, uh, who was the, a cardiologist who was first studied transcendental meditation. Um, so I, uh, um, I worked with him for a while. But that was the most we ever talked, my father and I, about, about any of this. Uh, he was proud of my, uh, of my writing, and he had copies of my books in his office, but I, I uh, never tried to uh, uh, convince him of anything or engage him really with it uh, until he, um, uh, he had a brain tumor, the same kind that John McCain has now and that um, uh, Ted Kennedy died from. Uh, but it was on the non-dominant side of his brain, unlike where Ram, Ram Dass' stroke was on the dominant side, which is why it took out his speech, but this brain tumor was on the, the hidden side of my father's brain, so it only affected his sense of balance and direction. Um, so he, was, he, he went on, he was still working and seeing patients and going to the hospital every day until he got lost one day driving home from the hospital, the same route he'd taken for 30 years. And that's when they found the tumor, and by then it was too late. It had already, you know, they couldn't do anything about it. Um, and he, being a scientist, knew um, what was happening. And I, uh, in my office one afternoon, realized, oh, I've never, you, you know, now he's going to die, and I've never tried to really talk to him about what maybe I understand or don't understand from my studies about what might or might not happen uh, at the time of death. But I thought, oh, maybe I should try to say something just in case. Um, so I picked up the phone and called him, and he was very receptive. I, you know, and I prefaced it, by, you know, I don't know if you're interested, and uh, but uh, I didn't want to, you know, never try to talk about it. Uh, but I wanted to try to talk to him in non uh, non Buddhist language. So I tried to find everyday language to uh, present it to him with. So I said something to him like. You know that sense uh, uh, inside of you where you always feel, you're, you've always been the same to yourself, like when you were 20 or 40 or 60 or 80, that if you close your eyes and when you're going to sleep or if you're you know, out for a walk or something, that your sense of yourself is, you're, you're, it's still you. It hasn't, like the body might be changing, but you, but if you try to put your finger on that, on that sense, it's very hard to find. It's kind of transparent or invisible, that, that feeling, and yet it's there. I said what the Buddhists seem to say is that if you can learn to relax your mind into that kind of invisible, transparent space where you are, who you've always been, that you can ride that out uh, as you die. Um, and he was okay, darling, I'll try. Um, <laughs> and um, that, that was the last real conversation uh, uh, that we had. But it was a good, it felt like... Uh, that was his last word? The, well, he, no, he went on to... They, he, they, they insisted on biopsying the, uh, the tumor, even though um, it, there was nothing to do about it. And then he got an infection from the biopsy, and then he uh, dropped into a coma, and that's how he died, instead of... Uh, and he, his last one, he was in the hospital. My, my, I have a younger brother who's a, a more of a scientist than I am who was with him. And my, his last words were, um, he was with my brother, and he was like, well, John, 
uh, I'm re I feel really grateful for, and my brother thought he was going to say, you know, for my children and my family. He's like, I feel really grateful for the, all the wonderful fellows that I, the, the uh, young doctors who I've been able right. to train. Right. <laughs> so that's where his love was, you know? So oh. he was going to the right place. Um, this video was brought to you in part through the generous support of the Tibet House U.S. membership community and viewers like you. To learn more about the benefits of Tibet House membership, including special tours with Robert Thurman and geographic expeditions, please visit tibethouse.us. Tashi Delek, and thanks for tuning in.